Hello and welcome to Kismet Rising. So we are in May. It's been a turbulent few weeks with regard to the eclipses and the um, the full moon that we've had as well as the new moon that we'll be having next week. And if you want to hear about that, let me know and I'll do an energy forecast. But in the meanwhile, I'm here with you for the monthly Oracle card guidance and you can go ahead and choose option one, which is the Kuan Yin uh, Oracle. The, um, option two, which is the Aboriginal Dreaming Totem, and um, option three, which is the Burning Serpent Oracle. So go ahead, make your selection, and you can go directly to the reading. For those of you who've chosen option number one, we're asking, what do we need to know for the month of May 2024? What is our Oracle card guidance for the month of May 2024? Oh, well, we have, I'll display that so you can see it. Okay, for those of you who've chosen the Kuan Yin uh, Oracle, uh, it is by Alana Fairchild, and it's the pocket edition that I'm using. We have the following cards, Sweeping Sister Willow, Turquoise Lotus Mother, and bamboo moon. So what I'd like to do is just read what's written here on these cards and then I'd like to give you um, a clairvoyant interpretation and reading of what to expect in the month of May. So the first card is Sweeping Sister Willow and it reads, here is healing that brings with it forgiveness and the release of old pain. As Sweeping Sister Willow gracefully sweeps any sadness and pain from your heart and soul. Your time for greater inner freedom is dawning and the cleansing of sadness and healing of forgiveness create the pathway to that greater freedom now. You deserve this freedom and you're swiftly becoming ready to claim it. So, you know, this is, I always say this, it seems like I say this more often than not, um, that the energy um, of, this, of the time is very much reflected on the cards in the monthly Oracle card guidance and these last uh, few weeks, it's very much been the last, I would say the month, um, the last six weeks or so have been very much about uh, recurring themes that begun perhaps last year sometime. For some of you, it would have begun around July, maybe June. For others um, in December, uh, others in, Mar in January and March, they were these kind of ten poles of energy. And what you'd find is that it really is bringing to light all that you don't need. Um, it's excavating healing that needs to take place or pain that needs to take place. That, sorry, pain that's there that needs to be released and trauma that needs to be um, let go of. And it's very much about what approach are you going to take and how is it that you're going to go ahead? Are you going to uh, look at the pain of the past and um, take on blame and just um, or be blameful or be a victim or, or be um, somebody who's angry and aggressive towards those who've hurt you? Or are you just going to be able to take on the learning that comes with the particular situation, not uh, discounting the, the, the necessary attention and healing that needs to take place but having done all of that taking into account what needs to be done in order to let go of that situation for once and for all so that you actually can have a new beginning with none of that residue from the past and none of that um, that not being your identity it's like you can, you have this opportunity to re-define um, yourself and what is your story what is your um, who are you? Are you defined by a sum of your your traumas or your your difficult moments, or are you something else? Is there something um, beyond that which you're going to allow the world to see as you go ahead? And so I think that this is a theme right now for everyone, actually, not just for those of you who've chosen this option. All right. Um, and then the next card is Turquoise Lotus Mother. It says an old pattern is finally ending. 
You are to be lifted from your struggle, freed from the weight of the past. You have learned all that you needed to learn, and now it is time for relief, release, divine protection, and the happiness of a healed heart and peaceful soul. Well, you know, I think it's very much in accordance with the first card and what I'm talking about. You have the time now to be able to completely let go of what is in the past and to be able to bring your true nature out and to be able to allow your soul purpose to come into focus for you and to live according to your soul as opposed to an identity that you may have developed over time in response to your your childhood to the experiences you've had in a particular relationship or in your work environment um, or what you think the world expects of you and I think that here you have the chance to finally leave that behind and finally move on. I think May is going to be so amazing because as I said, it's a culmination of energies from such a long time. And for those of you who have been, who are, have a, a perhaps um, a birthday this month or a birthday around the new moon this month, or you've had a birthday around the full moon of last month, you're going to find that this impacts you a lot stronger. Also, if your birthdays have been around the eclipses, uh, which are around the 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 24th of March, 25th of March, or around the 17th or 18th of September later this year, because some of this energy is going to come back out and it's going to revisit us back then. And if you haven't done the work, if you haven't been able to let go and be able to redefine your life in accordance with what is true to your well-being and your soul, then what you're going to find is that it comes up again around September and you have another chance to be able to do that, okay? And then we have the, the card, the last card here, which is called Bamboo Moon. Did you know that there are no mistakes in the universe and all events, circumstances, relationships and situations are unfolding in perfection with the timing and intelligence of the divine plan? Any apparent delay is in your favor. If something is happening for you right now then that is perfect sorry if something is happening for you right now then that is perfect too divine timing is perfection it is safe to trust this now all right so um i think that you know that is that's a card that's um that talks of a truth but it also is really hard to to accept that you know if something hasn't happened or hasn't gone the way you wanted it to go it's very hard to to accept that, especially when you're in the moment, you've been waiting for something to happen. If you've felt a bit of impatience, if you've been waiting for something for a very long time and it doesn't happen, it's very hard to actually accept that. But it is exactly that. And I think the, the idea here is just trust. And if you haven't been able to find your way out of whatever has brought you... Um, uh, whatever experiences have brought you to the point where you need to redefine um, yourself or rediscover who you are, uh, redefine your boundaries perhaps, then you are going to be um, not able to, to trust as you normally would be. And I think that this card is a reminder to just simply trust that everything that's happening right now is part of the plan and that there is no mistake about it. And even though you may be feeling uh, otherwise about it, other than gratitude, other than trust, that you need to kind of slowly draw yourself back to that gratitude, back to that trust, that you, that faith, actually, that everything is working out um, to the best plan that they can be and that it will all be okay. And that is such a controversial statement to make because people who've gone through pain or loss or hardship in some particular way will say, well, how can I? Um, because, you know, things, how could I have gone through that? How could that be part of the plan? And I think one needs to arise above situations with grace. And that's so much easier said than done. Uh, but we, I think we all need to just rise beyond um, and be graceful in our approach to what is happening around us. And um, yeah, well, that can be quite challenging as well. <laughs> so good luck with that. So I've done the reading a bit differently this month. Usually I talk about it in terms of the different weeks um, 
of the month. And um, th this this week, what I feel is that right now, the energy is so strong as a residual of uh, the last week. And I think that what is actually going on right now is going to be quite encompassing upon the rest of the month. So it's like this high point at the beginning of May. And then as you go down towards the 8th of May, 9th of May, you're going to find that there's this new opportunity or this opportunity for new beginnings. It's like you can you know, completely wipe the slate clean and start over again in your life. And you have a chance to do that. It's a new beginning, not just for those born at that time, but for everyone. And uh, yeah, I think it's going to be quite interesting. Look, for some of you, you won't necessarily resonate with the new beginnings uh, directly. But what you might find is that opportunities arise for you to change the way in which you interact with people, the way in which you approach situations or people in your life, you may be less willing to tolerate things that you might have tolerated in the past. And you use this opportunity to be able to reinforce your boundaries or to make clearer your boundaries so that others may be in support of what it is that you envision for yourself as you go ahead. So I think that that is part of the energy and, um, and as well. I think also that as you go ahead in the month of May, there's an opportunity for you to be um, at the height of your manifestation. I think that you need to become a lot clearer about what exactly it is that you want in order for that manifestation to take place. And there's just a huge opportunity to make things happen and to put things in gear because it's almost like you've ended a phase, a chapter of your life and the new phase is beginning. And um, it's like, the energy or the universe is waiting to take down notes as to what your requirements are as you go ahead. So you have to be quite decisive about what it is that you need and want from your life at this point so that you can go ahead and manifest that with ease and also live the life that is in accordance, as I've said already, with your soul purpose and with your your divine self, your higher self. All right. So I'm going to leave it there. I think that May is an amazing time for you and it's going to be uh, just truly, truly beautiful and amazing. And um, here are the cards if you want to take another look at it. And um, yeah, I wish you all a very blessed May and uh, blessings abound from Kismet Rising. And for those of you who've chosen the option number two, we're looking at the Aboriginal Dreaming Totem. We're asking, what do we need to know for the month of May? What is our guidance? What is it that we need to come into awareness of? And um, yes, and just the guidance, the Oracle card guidance for the month of May 2024. So in this month, I'm not really, I've just, I'm not really... These are not really oracle cards. These are more just cards, but I would like to use them as oracle cards and to be able to to gain the information necessary from them. And as you know, I just use them as a guideline. I don't, in fact, I use the clairvoyancy to be able to impart your message to you. And these cards are simply, um, yes, are simply there to give me some inspiration. So we're asking what is it that we need to know in the month of March, I mean in the month of May of you have chosen the option number two the cards we have for the month of may 2024 are commitment wonderful frustration and calm so i'm just going to read out what's on the card and i'm going to intuit um and 
deliver to you clairvoyantly the message for the month of May, okay? So the first card is commitment and it says, ask yourself the question you often ask everyone else. What do you need? Listen to the answer and respond actively and committedly as you do for others in your life, okay? Um, so this is so, so um, pertinent. I think for those of us who are caregivers, who are mothers, who are people looking after family or being in the, the profession of healing or um, some kind of uh, consultancy work. And I think that very often we are looking after everyone else but ourselves. And this card just reminds you to do that for yourself. You know, give yourself the healing that you want to give to another because that's actually why you want to be the healer. That's actually why you want to be the therapist. Um, it's because you need to give it to yourself first before you can actually give it to another. And I think that this, for the month of May, it's calling you to actually ask yourself, what is it that I can do for me that I would be happy to do for another, that I would eagerly do for another but I might be ignoring in myself. And I'm not saying that every one of you is ignoring uh, yourself. And I, I just think that there might be a calling within yourself to do something that you might not even be able to see. It might kind of be in your blind spot. And you would be very happy to do that for another. So definitely think about what it is that you need, what it is that you'd like, and how it is that you could potentially start be giving that to, to yourself. The second card is wonderful. It says, sometimes being too cautious is just an excuse for being afraid to take risks and move forward. Don't use this as your excuse to miss out on something amazing. Okay, so the card is suggesting for you to take have courage. And I would say that I've put out four cards uh, here. I didn't do this the reading uh, like this for the first option but what I've done here is put out a card for each week and so um, for each week of May we have a card so I think in the second week of May um, the uh, the advice is not to be too cautious just to do something that is uh, wonderful for yourself and uh, just you know not necessarily throw caution to the wind but instead of doing things in a particular way that you might be used to doing it Perhaps be more spontaneous, perhaps be a bit more relaxed about it, perhaps um, not lower your standards, but um, let your standards be a bit more flexible. You know, this is not to say that you should compromise yourself in any way uh, or that you should lower your boundaries that are there to protect you, but rather to say, well, you know, perhaps it's fine to simply have a get together without planning it too in too much of detail or perhaps it's it's good to just go on a little trip without overthinking it and over planning it you can actually just go ahead and and do something perhaps you went meet, meaning to meet somebody but you've decided to go ahead and, and call them up and meet with them and you know it's quite an impulsive thing so I think the call here is to be a bit more impulsive as you enter the second week of May the third card is frustration and I would say that's for the third week of May. It says your frustration is not a wasted energy if it is channeled positively to create a better outcome for yourself. Embrace frustration and work with it, not against it. Now, I think this is so important because sometimes you find yourself in, in a particular situation where you're frustrated about something. Things are not really done your way or um, you're frustrated with others for not particularly respecting aspects of yourself or your life or your home or your workspace um, or your time. And uh, you could have a degree of frustration here, but this card is suggesting that you work with it. You know, what is it bringing up for you? How is it that you can improve your life by using the things that frustrate you to bring a reminder to yourself of how, of that you need to pay more attention to something? Um, perhaps you need to take charge of something that you've been delegating to somebody else. And very often we are told delegate, but sometimes um, it's better not to delegate and to actually do something yourself if it is causing you frustration and you want to be able to ease that frustration. So I think, you know, think about ways in which you can use your frustration 
to build something that's better and that's going to be much ha make you much happier and if it does make you happier then you can actually um have something out of it that is what you needed in the first place that you might not have paid attention to for some time um, you know on youtube there is a modern i think it's modern talking uh i'm not sure but a guy who does feng shui and uh i can't remember his name right now but he he's doing a series uh for the last weeks called uh, called fix it okay and i think that the frustration it's almost like the same energy like you know fix it <laughs> just do something about it so that it's not going to cause you that frustration anymore and and rather than it becoming uh, some kind of routine uh, which causes a complaint for you and then you find yourself in a situation where you're you are nagging or it's nagging you and I think that you can just you know nip that in the bud and fix it and just deal with the frustration take it on listen to that frustration and pay attention to it and act upon it so as to relieve that frustration and that's what week three if may is about it's about doing that and i can give you some examples of how you can do that you know perhaps it's a matter of, of doing some filing or reorganizing things or just wiping up crumbs that somebody else has left behind or just um reorganizing your shoe cupboard <laughs> or just doing something that's going to bring you a lot more relief because you've done it um, perhaps um, just scheduling things uh, an hour earlier than you would normally do it so that you could take advantage of the light or an hour later if you're in the southern hemisphere and light is fading and so just just do something that's going to bring a, a much better quality to your life all right and so uh, that is week three and then as you move on to week four we have the card calm and it reads breathe heal your tired body and allow your spirit to find peace without harmony your healing journey will take much longer okay so i think that as you have an active month of may where you are having to take care of yourself and make some changes for yourself that make things better and then you taking risks uh, and doing things that might be quite busy in itself and then you have you know the third week where you're dealing with frustration i think it makes a lot of sense as you come to the end of may to actually just be calm be within yourself and ground yourself and feel that inner harmony and that inner chord within yourself and be in sync with it as opposed to rushing around um like a headless chicken as the saying goes or feeling pressured to do something for someone or something else for another or putting um unex unrealistic expectations upon yourself and putting yourself under a lot of stress so i think that if you can you need really to you need really to uh give yourself that space of calm and actually just bring yourself down and earth yourself to earth you know bring yourself back to earth and be gentle with yourself and be more present with yourself so i think that may is going to be quite a productive month for you it feels like you're taking care of yourself uh you're taking care of that what what is around you you're looking after your playful spirit and the aspect of yourself that needs to be spontaneous and impulsive you're looking after the the peace in your life and the uh, the serenity that is necessary so it's a very good combination of all aspects of your oneself that needs to be taken care of you know if you think about uh the different elements in your life and and how to bring everything into balance so i wish you a fabulous month of may and uh, may you have the 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 necessary uh, determination and courage to be able to take the risks make the changes fix it <laughs> and be committed to yourself as well as to have the calm and enjoy the calm when the time comes for it 
All right. Wishing you many blessings and blessings abound from Kismet Rise. Okay, so for those of you who've chosen option number three, I've chosen the Burning Serpent Oracle. And actually, I just... I'd forgotten that because I hadn't used it in a while. I'd forgotten that it's not an actual Oracle card guidance, but it's, uh, I mean, Oracle cards, but it's actually um, a Lenormand deck. So we're going to do the best that we can. And uh, we're asking the question, uh, since you have already chosen the deck, uh, I'm still going to use it. We're asking the question, what is it that we need to know for the month of May 2024? And... Um, yeah, what do we need to be warned about and what is our guidance for 20, May Okay, so for those of you who've chosen the option number three, we have the Little Norman deck, which is called the Burning Serpent Oracle. And we are going to, we're asking, what do we need to know for May 2024? So the first card that comes up for the first week of May is Jumping Fish, which is a card of abundance and a card of great wealth coming your way, great opportunity coming your way to be able to create wealth. And so I'd say that for the month of, for the first week of May, you really need to look at how it is that you can create wealth in your life and how it is that you can tap into resources that you've been able to tap into previously to be able to create more wealth in your life, to be able to look at what you have and look at how you can use it and to be able to make a sum of the skills that you have as well as the um, the information that you have at hand to be able to create uh, more wealth and more prosperity in your world and to be able to create new uh, sources of income as well. So I think that in the first week of May, you're going to find that your life is really abundant, that things are kind of taking off, that you may have been feeling underwater for a bit, but you've kind of uh, come out of that phase and that spell and that things may be looking for, up for the better financially. As we come into the second week of um, May, the card we have is the dead tree. And I feel that as we come into the second week of May, you may be feeling that uh, your relationship to your health has been redefined. The way in which you've been eating or looking after your body, or the way in which you move has been changed or you've decided already that it's going to change. I think that you will also find that uh, as you go ahead, um, that perhaps your relationships with your family may change or the way in which you, you relate to them may change. The relationship may not change, but the way you relate to them, the way you emotionally relate to them may change. And so I think it's going to be a week where you are actually um, reevaluating perhaps health choices that you've made in the past, as well as relationship choices with your family, with people who um, most uh, likely represent your um, your legacy or or family. OK, or both. Or if it's, you know, if it's um, it could be one or the other or both. So I think that um, uh, this, the second week of May is really very much about perhaps consolidating what you have already here and looking at how it can translate in the future. Um, so I've given you like it could apply to people in different ways. So for some, it would be family. For some, it would be your health. For others, it would be about how you are going to um, secure your legacy through the your financial well-being and your financial decisions that you've made and opportunities that have come up in the first week of May. And then as we go into the third week of May, we have the Rusted Cross. And I think here, as you come into the third week of May, you're going to be feeling responsibility bearing down on you. You're going to be more aware of the responsibilities that you have about things that need to be taken care of Perhaps it's got to do with um, basic industrial matters or it ha could have to do with domestic issues. Um, things that need to be taken care of. Perhaps um, someone who's, who assists you with that is no longer available or, or not there for that week. 
and you're going to need to take on more um, more responsibility perhaps at your workspace or in in any kind of situation where there's simply just more for you to think about more for you to to do and it could be that um, all of this here has brought upon a whole lot of work that you have to take care of to process this new found wealth or this new found opportunity and the plan that you have for it here and there you have in the third week of May needing to deal with that or it could be having to face the consequences of the changes you made made here with regard to family relationships or with regard to your health and then you have to um, bear the cross for that because you know perhaps you've decided to st start a particular diet and you find it very hard in the third week of May or perhaps you've decided to change the way you relate to to your your family members and you find that quite hard to deal with. So something about responsibility, added responsibility, something about finding um, in yourself more awareness about what needs to be done in the work week of May, the third week of May. Now, for some of you, it might not be nothing new, actually, that you have to do, but rather that you're more aware of what it is that you have to do. OK, so as you enter the last week of May, we have the heart. And there could be love in some kind of way. So the way I'm looking at this is that you may find that a relationship that you think has slipped away or has disappointed you uh, recently or in the past has come back to um, see if there's a chance. It could be that uh, you are more open to having love in your life. For some of you, it's really about you looking after yourself in this time and giving the love that you need to yourself or that you seek outside of yourself for yourself. You know, for some of you, it could mean having long baths in candlelight. For some of you, it would could be hiking or doing some kind of sport, you know, um, surfing or um, something, something that gives you joy, that makes you feel alive and makes your heart pump a little faster. And as I said, it could actually be love as well. Um, I, for some of you, it might be just your heart is filled with love because of these relationships that you've redefined and that you have taken responsibility for. And your heart is filled with love as a result. OK, regardless, it's going to be a great month for you from beginning to end. We have abundance. We have an abundance of love. We have abundance. And in terms of your um, your well-being, don't. Don't let this dead tree here worry you too much. Sometimes certain things need to die in order for things to be reborn. OK, and um, I don't see it being really harmful. And there's nothing really to be worried about here. I don't feel any really poor energy um, from, you know, that comes up with this card. And nor do I feel that with this card. I just feel like they kind of work together to be able to manage something with less frivolity that, 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 that you'd normally be managing it with. Okay, it's just, it's a lot, there's more about a maturity right here that you may have not um, um, used previously that's now coming to into focus. So you can do that. And um, as you come to the end of the month, that's, it's all lighthearted again and quite, um, and quite beautiful. I feel like you're going to feel a lot better as you come to the end of May um, with regard to your heart and perhaps overcoming disappointments that you may have experienced at the end of April and at the beginning of May. All right. Wishing you all a fabulous May. Many, many blessings to you all. Blessings abound from Kismet Rising.